Hey guys, this is the result of my second November challenge. The prompt was Psychedelic LA and I posted it on Twitter and some users asked me about the outline effect and how I did it. And I guess it's a nice thing to show to you because it's a very simple and effective way of doing the outline in real time with geometry nodes and yeah it has some cool parameters uh, noise and all the other stuff so yeah let's do this okay so for the effect i add the classic monkey susan mesh and then i add the geometry nodes modifier and to add a little bit more resolution i add the subdivision surface node and i also want to shade this smooth so yeah, that's the base mesh. And how do we get an outline? And this is very simple. We need to duplicate the mesh and add a little bit of offset and then add another material where we only render the back face of the material. And that's a classic trick. I guess most of you know it already, but let me show you how you do this in geometry nodes. So how do we offset the mesh along the, its normals? We use the set position node and the normal. And then we use the normal for the offset. And if I plug this straight in here, you can see that the mesh gets inflated. And to control the strength, we can use a vector math scale node. And with this, I can nicely control the amount of offset. Okay, so to make this a duplicate of this model here, we can first put this in a frame and then we use the join geometry node. And to display both, we simply do this. And yeah, so if I now toggle on x-ray you can see that there is kind of an outline appearing and for this to work we need two different shaders or two different materials so we use the set material node one time here and then here and then i create two materials one is the solid mesh and then the other is the outline material so here i apply the outline Oops, wrong material. And here the solid mesh. And then we switch to rendered view. And for the outline material, we want it to have a transparent attribute. So when we look from the front of the face, we want it to have a transparent value. And when we render the back face, we want it to be opaque. So to give this material this attribute, we can choose one of these alpha methods here. I tend to use alpha clip for this and we don't want a shadow. And that's all we have to do here. And in the material, we need to define two shaders. One is the transparent shader and the other one can be any other shader, a diffuse or emission works for this uh, too or i think the best so we need a transparent and an emission shader and then we mix these shaders depending on the back face value and we can get the back face value with the geometry shader node and here we have the back facing if i plug this straight in here you can see that it already works. So yeah, here we can define the color. And with this value, I can control the thickness of the outline. And yeah, let's quickly change the other material to give it more of a tune like look. So I add a line, a uh, light, sunlight in this case. Just a very quick setup here, nothing 
special and I give it a rim light a little bit so maybe like this and then in my solid shader I simply use the shader to RGB node and maybe it's nice to show you my shader the shader I've used in my November prompt and it's also a thing some people ask me about so yeah uh, how to do this it's really simple we need a noise texture and the texture coordinate for the window and if we look at this you can see that it is mapped depending on the camera and we have to take the aspect ratio in it into account so yeah you can compensate this with a, a little bit of vector math here so simply add a vector math node and set it to multiply and the first two values you can control your aspect ratio but anyway i don't need this for now because i want to use a square format for my camera so yeah let me quickly add the camera here like this okay that's okay i guess and then i increase the scale here to give it this noisy look and in combination with this shader to rgb node here I can use the greater than node, so math greater than, and compare these values against each other. And to control the effect, I can simply use a color ramp, for example. And yeah, you have this nice airbrush effect or something like this. And of course you can do crazy stuff with this but a simple thing to do is for example take the mix color node use this for the factor and then you can change here the values to your preference so yeah nothing crazy just maybe like this then of course we need to adjust the outline color maybe like this yeah so another thing that's cool to have is maybe a little bit of noise and some of you may, might have guessed already how we can do this so right here where we have the offset value we simply need to plug in a random value you can do this with the random value node which works based on each point so if i plug this trait in here and then adjust these values here a little bit you can see already that the value goes from 0 to 0 0.02 but we all also can do a noise texture and use this instead and then we can remap this value with the map range node for example and yeah we can define these values here so i want to let it go from 0.01 to 0.03 for example and to give the texture here the noise texture more contrast can simply play with these values here so maybe like this and then this here is the scale of the noise obviously and yeah to animate this noise texture we can simply animate the vector and how do we do this we can take the position for the vector input and then simply add with the vector math node oh, that's the wrong note. Vector math. 
we can add values here. So yeah, so this is the offset for the vector. And of course you can do this with a random value node, switch this to vector, give this values here. And then for the ID mask, you have to take the mesh into account. In this case, a mesh island node would work. So when I plug this straight in here, it takes a random value for each of the vertices, but I want a random value for the whole mesh. So I can plug this right in here. And with the seed value, we can animate this. So for example, if I take the scene time and for each frame, I want another outline, we can maybe do this. Yeah. And that's one trick you can do. And another thing that's very useful if you have multiple objects and for some you don't want an outline to, re to render or you want the outline to be thinner, you can capture the attributes. So let me show you what I mean. If I add uh, another object, for example, I take a sphere, a UV sphere right here. And I also shade this smooth. And then I offset it a little bit with the set position node to display both of these meshes here. And for this, I use the joint geometry node. So yeah, here I offset it in its Z direction, maybe like this. And if I want this sphere here to have another thickness or no outline at all, maybe I show you this first. So we don't want an outline. We can simply say here, before we solidify this, that we want to delete the sphere or exclude it from the outline mesh. So yeah, we can use the delete geometry node and I simply capture here a Boolean, capture attribute, switch this to Boolean, and then I toggle this on. So this here has this Boolean, which is true, and then I can plug this in here. So yeah, simply can toggle the outline. Uh, but what I tend to do in the newer versions of Blender, we have the store attribute name or store named attribute. And with this, I don't have to make all these connections. So I can switch this here to a Boolean again, toggle this on and say, for example, no outline. And then I can pull up this attribute right here with the named attribute and then I choose no outline and plug this right in here. So yeah, with this you can exactly define which mesh should have an outline and which shouldn't have an outline. And for example, if you want to control different sizes of the outline, so let me quickly delete this here, we can do the same or similar with the store named attribute again. And for this, I need a float. And I say, for example, outline thickness. And let's say we want a factor of 0.5 on this one. And here I want a factor of 1.5, for example. And then I can simply right here, either plug this attribute straight into the uh, scale input here, so outline thickness, and of course it's very extreme, so we need to multiply it or adjust it uh, here, adjust our floats here, but 
doesn't really matter. So yeah, you see this has a smaller outline or a thinner outline. Yeah. But we already have this nice noisy effect here. So let's simply multiply this factor with this. And yeah, you see that we have a nice controllable outline. And yeah, what else can we do? And uh, what I recently do more often with geometry nodes is to pass color attributes between the modifier here to my shader. And that's a really nice way to control uh, all the appearance of the object in one place. And for this, I simply store a color attribute. So I switch this to color and I name this here outline color. And to make it accessible in my modifier, I can use the group input node. And here I say top color and for this I give it the name bottom color. Yeah, the naming is <laughs> not really good, but it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> and now we have this color attributes here. So I can define a color for the top and for the bottom. Oh yeah, maybe give this a yellow outline. And with this, I can go in my outline shader and get this attribute with the attribute node. And here we have to type in our attribute name and it is named outline color. <laughs> we want it to name outline color. So uh, paste this in here. And why doesn't it work? Oh yeah, I have to of course correct this error here too. And yes, so here we can now control the outline color for each of these objects individually. And of course you can do this with the other material too, but I guess you can figure it out yourself. And yeah, that's the really simple outline effect. And for completion purposes, you can skip this step, but maybe it would be nice to have these values here accessible too. So this is the top thickness. This is the bottom thickness. Yeah. That's a really quick and easy outline. So here's another scene I've did also for the November challenge and I used similar methods. So yeah, you can see it's really flexible, nice setup. Okay, that's it for today and see you next time.